it may be new, for some it's uh, already something that we know, but uh, one, one thing important there is that we begin to realize that there is really a need to change the way we do things. You know, if we want to expect uh, changes to take place, uh, then we would like to really see uh, you know, uh, changes in terms of results, then we want to really see uh, some new ways of doing things. So we had been talking about pr principles and mindsets and paradigms yesterday that uh, would help us uh, become more effective in the ministry. Remember, uh, we're, we're saying these are, these are not really new. Uh, these are actually uh, new in the sense that it's not been practiced for a while in the churches, but it's really old because it's based on the New Testament church uh, practices and, and how they did ministry. Okay, so we, we were talking about the priesthood of all believers. Remember that? That every believer is a royal priest. And in fact, we were given the highest level of priests possible. So we should not look at ourselves as something uh, that God can accuse or somebody that God can accuse, but God can just use us in an amazing way. And we have heard stories about what God is doing and how God is using ordinary people uh, to not just uh, share the gospel, not just to multiply disciples, but to really see church planting movements happening. That 280,000 baptized just because of Abdul, you know, we, we have seen the story of Yoli, how, how the, the employers uh, came to Christ and how the ministry expanded, uh, you know, the ministry in Nepal, in, in Ukraine. You, you, you have uh, heard about that yesterday. And Filipinos also uh, that uh, are living and working overseas. So we have seen how God is using ordinary people. Amen. And so let that be our assurance and confidence that as we go to the vision field, the same God who was with them is the same God who promised to be with us. Okay, so uh, briefly, uh, let me just show you this. Uh, well, we again, we call, uh, you know, a uh, uh, Filipino guy, normally Juan, and uh, Lady Juana. Uh, so anyway, so here is uh, Juan, here is uh, a guy, and um uh, we would say that he is uh, an overseas Filipino worker, so he, he works overseas. But the same principle actually will apply not just to uh, ten makers, but even uh, for us uh, who will be full-time or career missionaries. But anyway, for a ten maker, of course, or for you to be used of the Lord, first and foremost, you need to have a relationship with the Lord. Secondly, that you're able to share Jesus. That's why we were saying you need to learn how to share the gospel. And there are many ways to be able to do that. <clears throat> so we would like to really uh, enhance our skills in the area of sharing the gospel. And then we need to be willing to find and befriend a person of peace. Remember a person of peace we studied yesterday? Yes, it's somebody who has a heart prepared already, open to the gospel, and then uh, very much willing to, to introduce you to the community. And actually that would be the key person you know, to see a movement taking place. And of course, we'll start a simple reproducing church. So simple, starting small, and then depending on situations. In the Philippines, it's good that we have freedom of religion so we can be, build big buildings like C CCF. You were there already, right? I mean, 3 billion pesos uh, of, of facility. So that's really something. It's 10,000. That's okay here, but in restricted countries, you cannot build facilities like that. No? So again, that the model or the type of church that we would be planting should actually be dependent on the situation. But, and, and in the Philippines, we have also seen that the combination of both, you, know, you, you grow your, your church, but at the same time, you plant churches. Uh, CCF, they used to have one fellowship only. But now they've begun to realize for them to expand their ministries, they now began planting churches as well. Mm -hmm. no? uh, of course, Victory had been doing that. Uh, GCF used to be one only in Ortigas. You were also there already, right? But now they have daughter churches also. Even just right out at the exit here of Kainta, they have GCF East. And uh, I, I know you will be also 
well, in one of the Sundays, you will be there. Yeah. So anyway, uh, what is critical here is that we would be willing to start a simple reproducing church. Because if our mindset is to build a mega church, <laughs> so I cannot do that. But we can see a small, simple, like the Budspuri, 4 million believers, 80,000 home fellowships in a matter of 20 years. Start small. Okay? And the good thing is when you know how to do it small, it can actually grow. Because you can also teach others how to do it small. Right? So more reproducing, growing, multiplying, and then eventually you actually have a big one. So if you can congregate, then good. Well and good. If not, then you have a lot of churches, simple churches. Uh, we want to call it simple churches because there are also misconceptions that it cannot be a church if they don't have musical instruments. Huh? Yeah. yeah, if they don't have a projector, that's not really a church because they thought for, a, for it to be called a church, you have to have all of these things. No? But simple churches, because in other places, uh, you are not allowed to worship. You know? So, I mean, much more use instruments. You, you cannot do that. No? Uh, so, in Brunei, when we were there, they were clapping their hands. Not like this, but just worshiping the Lord. You know? they, uh, I mean, that's, that's the way to just express, you know. So we say simple, but reproducing. Okay? And we want to see many of this. So even our uh, you know, overseas Filipino workers, they can actually do it. Simple, reproducing. And you also, in the mission field, I believe that would still be one of the most effective. In fact, now we are, we are seeing church planting movements happening as a result of disciple making movements. It's all small, small, small. But bring them together, it's really big. You know? 80,000 of fellowships, 4 million believers in one people group in India. So we want to see that happen. Now, so there is God, and there is one. So what will the one do? One will pray. God, for example, he is in Saudi Arabia. He'll pray, God, use me here in Saudi Arabia. Make me a blessing. And then his home church in the Philippines will also pray to God that God will just use one. And then, of course, Juan will also have some prayer partners in different parts of the world who would also be praying to God for his effective ministry. And then there are overseas Filipinos, also believers, maybe in Saudi, who knows that he's there and will pray for him. So we also encourage, actually, uh, that you, you have your team. You know, you build a team to be with you. Uh, I mean, they may also be workers overseas workers like you, but get some people to be with you. Or maybe start a company tree with them, you know, and then make them part of your team. You know? So uh, that's really our goal. The, the intention is not for us to do the ministry alone. We want to build our team so that we'll be able to see more uh, come to Christ. Remember the principles? Every disciple is making disciple. You as a missionary is a disciple, right? And therefore you need to make disciples. As soon as possible and as much as possible. That's why uh, yesterday there was a question, what if after four weeks you cannot reproduce? Well, uh, sometimes that will happen. But as much as possible and as soon as possible we want to reproduce. Because if you say, okay, let's allow two months or three months, eventually that could be a year and you have not reproduced, right? So we want to break that, that uh, bad actually practice in the church. We want to reproduce as soon as possible and as much as possible. Remember that. As soon as possible and as much as possible. So we want to want to do that. And we want you in the ministry. Remember, the first one who comes who comes to Christ should be part of your team. Train them, disciple them, mentor them so that they can do what you're doing. In fact, the best way to gauge your success is not what you have accomplished but the best way is to gauge your success in terms of what your disciple can do and accomplish in other words if they can do good things and a lot of things you're a good mentor you're a good disciple but if they are not able to do what you're doing then you're a failure because our goal is to produce disciples 
impact parents, no? The, the, the mindset should be like parents. They want their children to be better than them. And they are very proud, you know? My son, you know, like he's a first honor in class. And what do they do? They said, it's because of me. Or it's because of me and my wife, you know, the combination of our intelligence produced this, you know, something like that. But why in the church, you know, we, we want to be the best. We, we, of course, we need to give God the best. But let's make it a goal that the people we disciple should be able to do ministry better than us and more effective than us. Therefore, we are successful. So that should be the gains. Okay? The more successful your disciples are, then the more successful you are also as a mentor, as a disciple. So every disciple making disciples, remember that. Every leader, you are a leader. Therefore, you should be reproducing leaders. And then eventually, your church will be planting churches. So, yeah, all of you praying that God will just move and, and uh, see a breakthrough. And then, of course, uh, you are now ready to share the Word of God. And, for example, Abdul is a co-worker, you know, uh, in, in your office or, or in the workplace. Uh, so, what do you do? Well, pray that God will give you a personal peace, right? And if that is Abdul, then begin to engage with Abdul, no, uh, the Word of God. And uh, what is your desire? To be able to start something uh, in the life of Abdul. If he is a person of peace, what will he do? He will normally open his home. He will normally, he will normally uh, encourage members of his family to listen to you. And so eventually what happens is that there will be a church in Abdul's house. So you see a house church. But that will not stop there. Why? Because Abdul, in his house, you know, they are meeting. Uh, maybe some friends or relatives are attending already. And they will also retell the story and, and, and do the same thing. Disciples start company tree. And eventually, another group is born. Another house church. And so on and so forth. So you see... A multiplication of churches happening as disciples are multiplying and this is what is actually called the church planting movement what's that when uh, churches ra are rapidly reproducing themselves in the homes of new believers remember yesterday we talked about new believers new believers can be a start of a new church and you notice here the the churches are rapidly reproducing in the homes of new believers so every new believer can be a start of a new church in fact every new believer can be a church planter and you see that happening here okay so we want to see that now uh, what is really important is for us to really be able to appreciate that indeed this is god's design it is not god's design for us to do we to be doing all the works of the ministry Okay, so before I proceed, I would like to, to entertain questions because uh, there might be some things that are lingering in your minds regarding what we, we had been talking about, discussing about yesterday. And I would, you know, there are many things that I can share. So I would like to narrow down and focus on areas that you feel uh, you need help. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk more about evangelism later and talk more about how you can also mobilize uh, teams uh, to be able to uh, be part of your team. Okay, so who will uh, be the first one? Any question? Yes. Okay. I want to understand if, for example, 
I, I received Jesus and I begin church. After, I have to call the pastor, the person who shared with me the gospel, or I have to continue. Because yesterday in the testimony of Abdul, mm -hmm. I saw one moment the return, 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 return. I think that during one moment, during a moment, Abdul maybe leave to, to study Bible and after he he back in his village. So he he, he began church. Began church. That is why I asked yesterday yeah. what is the new new believer. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. For, th thank you for bringing that again. Well this is a process. No? So if there's a new believer, it's not automatic that tomorrow they can start planting churches. What we mean here is, if he is a new, if say if Lester is a new believer, you know, not tomorrow he can plant a church. But what I will do is, I will disciple him. So spend time with him. So do company tree, help him grow, and then help him disciple other people. Okay, and then the disciple will be discipling others. The disciple of the disciple will disciple others. So. After some time, there will be a lot of disciples. And whether you like it or not, that will result in a church. So this is what we mean. It's not just an overnight thing that will happen. But what is important is in our mind, this is a new believer. If I spend time with him, disciple him, he will reproduce, he will grow, he will multiply, and eventually a church can be planted as a result. So it would be a process. It, this could be a year, this could be more than a year, it depends you know, uh, uh, how, how it would happen. But see, the 20 years in the Budspuri was about 14 generations. So if you look at it, it should be like an average of more than a year before one generation starts, right? Uh, but of course, uh, the starting will be difficult. Uh, but once you gain the momentum, it's easier. Okay, so, but still, the average is about a year over a year before they really reproduce. So, uh, it, it will be possible that it will take a year or, or even two years uh, or even three years before a church can be started. But the point is, it's possible. So, we just want that in our minds. Because, again, if we see here is a new believer, and that's not what we think, that this can be a start of a new church, sometimes we won't mind doing nothing, no? The, not, we will not think of doing follow-up. But if we say this can be a start of a new church, then we will do everything to do the follow-up. Okay. So I hope that helps. And then, of course, uh, there are trainings that can be done in the process. Like once you're handling already, like our overseas Filipino workers. So they are now, they started a, a group. Ne they, it was never their intention, actually, if we asked them, we, uh, you know, did you intend to plant the church? No, not really. My intention was just to share the gospel and make disciples and encourage them to also disciple others. And then it resulted to a church. So they are not actually ready to, to, to be pastors. So what's being done now is that they, uh, their denominations here or group of ministerial fellowships like in the country have decided, hey, we have many of these in our, say in Qatar, or in Bahrain, or in Oman, or in the United Arab Emirates, so they would ask for training. So that's where, you know, there are uh, seminary professors that would go and help them. Or there are mentoring, so sometimes when I go, we just sit down and we, we, we ask them, well, what areas are you having difficulty? What areas do you need help? You know, and then so we, we, we do that face to face, or we do that on Skype, or we do that on call, depending on the needs and resources that they need, so, so we provide. So now, uh, as a result, uh, they're able to have uh, the necessary training to provide spiritual leadership for the churches. Uh, for example, in Qatar, there are schools there uh, that are really helping them in, 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 in the Gulf area. So we have, we have uh, partnerships with other missions groups and organizations that are providing theological education. 
And then others, it's their denominations that are sending their missions directors or or uh, seminary professors to help, you know, mentor uh, these pastors. So it it could be something like that, you no? Know, that uh, they already started the church, and in in the process, they are also provided the training. Uh, in most cases, of course, you are a seminary graduate or a Bible school graduate first before you go. That's a very traditional uh, way. But again, there are many ways uh, that God is moving nowadays. So the, the, the mindset that it's only pastors that can plant churches, uh, we were saying is uh, really something that we want to break. Because we, we, we can really see here that even ordinary people can start churches. You know? And uh, in, in some cases, they will get a pastor to pastor the church. You know? uh, like those five domestic helpers that planted a church in, in Dubai, and more than 500 now are attending, they, the church decided to get a full-time pastor. So in the United Arab Emirates, they are allowed to, to give missionary visas. So the pastor there has a missionary visa, and, and already supported by the church. But that was the church decision. But in most cases, no. Uh, it's just the, 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 the one who started it, the leaders, they got seminary training or Bible school training and mentoring, and then they continually uh, you know, provide what is, uh, I mean, the, 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 the necessary training is the thing. I can, sh I can share with you actually some resources uh, it's a one one year discipleship essentials uh, that that you can use. It's like a seminary training. This was uh, one of the things we envisioned, and we did this in partnership with uh, Transworld Radio and Campus Crusade. So they developed these materials, and uh, let let me just uh, okay here discipleship essentials. Uh, and this is free. Um, they are buying all the rights for the material so that they can give it for free. So actually, I have now the year one of the materials. Uh, okay. So you'll notice it's four years actually. First year is essential for essentials for Christian living. Second is essentials for spiritual leadership. Third will be Old Testament essentials. And then the fourth is New Testament Essentials. Four-year course. And you can study on, on your own. For example, who is Jesus? So that's actually seven lessons. Who is Jesus is one lesson. The promised Messiah is one lesson. The miracles of Jesus is one lesson. Okay, so it talks about understanding salvation. It talks about uh, Christian life and worldview. It talks about a relationship with God. You know, talking about knowing Him, the unique the attributes of God. Uh, of course, it talks about evangelism, the uh, Christian the, uh, disciplines like prayer, studying the Word, and then God in the spiritual realm. That's Christ, uh, essentials for Christian living. Essentials for Christian leadership. We'll be exploring discipleship, uh, leading small groups, spiritual gifts, the, the church and worship family life, leadership styles, you know, uh, Christian character development, forgiveness and reconciliation, Christian doctrine, you know, and then uh, pastoral basics, okay? So like the role of the pastor, the pastor as a teacher, the pastor as a counselor, etc. And then you have the books of the Bible Gen uh, from Genesis to Revelation. So Old Testament and New Testament. So it's, it's actually designed for those who had been in the field who started churches that are not seminary trained. Okay, so let me show you. For example, uh, I have, it's like almost, uh, no, no, uh, maybe around more than 10 gigabytes of material actually. So uh, I, I, can, I can give it to you. I have it on my, my USB. But let me show you. For example, one lesson alone, who is Jesus? You actually have a sound file. Okay, you can you can just play the sound. You have a movie file, the video file. So before you start the lesson, you can just play the
the children's ministry. A uh, few things I need to know about you. Do you have children? Yes, sir, I do. How many? Uh, three. Three children. Interesting. Uh, do you ever yell at your children? Sometimes I do. Sometimes. sometimes. Hmm. Okay. Why would you yell at your children? Well, it might be that they're misbehaving and uh, I, I shouldn't always, but sometimes. Okay, misbehaving. Now, do you listen to music while you drive? Yes, I do. What kind of music do you listen to? Oh, all kinds, pop music and good. While preparing for the play, I actually read a quote. I want to read it to you and see what you think. It's from C.S. Lewis in Mere Christianity. He says, I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people ought Anyway, uh, that's the video, no? So it, it would run for about 10 minutes on the average. And then you have actually the leader's guide, LG. See, because you're the leader, so that's your leader's guide. So the lessons are all there, the questions. So the genealogy of Jesus, the life and ministry of Jesus, Jesus' life and ministry, Why, what did Jesus say about himself? So he claimed to be the Messiah, he claimed to be sinless, he claimed to be the only way to God, and, and others, and then uh, what do you, what others say about Jesus? Okay, and, and so anyway, so it's there. You have the leader's guide, so you can print this uh, for you as a guide, or you can just use your gadget to be able to uh, just look at it and this SD is the study guide for your students so there are blanks because they will have to, to answer okay now uh, of course this is uh, when you study the uh, lesson essentials it will tell you what are the more important things to highlight and focus when you teach that lesson okay so who is Jesus so you play the video then you go through, uh, so that's one lesson. Now this is for one year. So even if, so this is, this is what our overseas workers are using. So even though they don't really go to seminary, if they study this or they study as a group, then that is, that's it. It can be also a material for Sunday school or for your Bible studies. So in the process, you're also training leaders. But as you do this, you know, that company tree should continue because you need to continually grow. Okay, remember, company tree objective is for you to engage people who are interested to study the Bible but are, are not yet believers. This is leadership training in the local church already, those who came to know Christ. Those who came to know Christ in the in the uh, uh, company tree and they are now part of the church then they can go, they can go through all of this leadership training will this be helpful yes. so I'll, I'll give you it's uh it's really a huge file uh one usb alone uh, 16 gig so it, it it's uh it almost consumes the whole the whole thing so it's all there so now no more problem because of technology praise god before, the only way to study is to really go to the seminary. Now it's all like this. And now it's Skype. We have friends that are doing Skypeship. <laughs> they use Skype to disciple. I know of a friend, he is the, the discipleship pastor, and he is discipling a group of seafarers, right, in a cruise ship. You know? So they will have a common time, and on Skype, they will communicate. So you can see... You know, the one on the other side on Skype. So they communicate and they call it Skypeship. So it's simply using technology. So nowadays, it's no longer a problem. Before, it's a problem. How can you pastor a church, you know, if you are in a train? No, but here, we are, we are seeing now, you know how to share the gospel, you know how to make disciples, you know how to start a, a Bible study group, and then you faithfully do that, then here comes a church planted. And then just keep studying. You know, and learning. Now, well, you, uh, here, it, you, you don't actually need to really go through it like in sequence. It depends on the need. You know? So, of course, it's good to start with who Jesus is because that's the very basic for, for follow-up for them to understand more about, about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ.
and talk more about salvation so they can really understand, you know, more about salvation.